All right. So hi, everyone. Uh, this is the uh, eighth um, global community call uh, for the Open COVID-19 initiative. Uh, and uh, I think it just proves like, um, that we're you know, doing this on, uh, on the distance. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I'm really looking forward to see all the advancements uh, that you guys have made. Uh, and uh, we have a few updates to, to, to share first regarding the program. And then um, we'll be having also the usual um, weather from the community made by, uh, made by Mark and uh, some updates also from the platform by Leo. Uh, and then we'd be inviting you to share the updates from your projects if you have any to share. Um, and uh, if it's not the case, you can go to the agenda and put your name there. Uh, and then we'll be also hearing from different work group uh, of this community, working on different aspects of the program, uh, what they want to share with you. Um, so first of all, uh, so the program now is uh, more than a month and a half. Uh, and, and clearly it has, grown beautifully the the number of projects uh is now higher than 100 regarding covid 19 and uh the level the quality of the projects uh is really remarkable uh and i think we are all making a proof here that um doing open science participatory science as what's going on here is really uh um, like a viable alternative, complementary alternative to uh, to what is um, academia or or the corporate world. Uh, so we're doing here something that is much bigger than than you know the fight against COVID nineteen. I'm very excited that you know we all get to be part of this. Um, and so uh, as the program develops, uh, we have more and more uh, actors joining, and. Uh, uh, to give a few examples, um, the last few days have been really also focused on the, how we could help the program go into areas of the world where it was not yet, you know, very much present. And for example, I'm talking about Africa. How can we actually, you know, have the same approach and, and have African communities also work on the, on the COVID-19 crisis from the African perspective and how can we connect, you know, between each other? And so we've been uh, doing partnerships with um, a few events and, uh, and organizations uh, in, in Africa. Uh, one is Africa vs. Virus uh, hackathons that was organized last weekend. It was a giant hackathon that gathered more than 25,000 participants. Uh, and uh, the kind of partnership we did um, is, is that uh, the, the, some of the best projects uh, that are fitting within what we do here in this program regarding the different challenges we have. And as long as the projects are open source uh, and have, with, have this high potential, we can help them. Uh, and we can also provide them with uh, the local micro grants. So this is a kind of agreement we have with them. It's a way to support the local communities also and local projects. Uh, in, that, in the same direction, we have a new partnership with Dan COVID-19 that I said it's a, it's a it's an initiative from Senegal uh, where uh, it's starting from the Minister of Health and they're, they're making a call for digital projects to help also the local crisis. Um, and so we'll be helping them also with, uh, to connect their community with ours uh, and our project with theirs uh, so that we can you know, uh, do something of higher scale. And so, you know, uh, for example, if you have a project that you feel is going to be uh, relevant, for uh, a Senegalese context, well, uh, you'll be able actually to contact them and work with them. Uh, and uh, so that th those kind of dynamics are really important here. Another uh, partnership we, uh, we've made is with Founders Future Act, uh, which is an initiative based here, based here in, uh, in France, uh, where it's a group of entrepreneurs that uh, came together with a fund to, uh, to help uh, mostly actually companies, uh, actually only companies normally, uh, that actually are developing solutions against COVID-19. Um, uh, but they were so interested in what they, we were doing that, like, uh, you know, let's forget about the fact that we're an investment uh, you know, company uh, fund uh let's let, let's help you so they, they gave us um like uh, they gave us like a thousand euros it's not maybe much but it's always good that we'll be able to use actually to fund more projects um and also 
entering um, a new aspect of this program, which is very important, is how do we engage more um, more people? How do we actually make sure that people hear more about um, the amazing work that you guys are doing? Uh, you know, and how can we actually uh, make a better proof of concept and share like the best practices. Uh, so it's all about how do we communicate um, everything that is going on here the best as we can uh, in, in the easiest, easiest way as we can. And so uh, in that aspect, we uh, we've made a partnership with both Mercury and So Good and Pixelis. Um, Mercury is a, is a media that is really specialized in uh, covering subjects about makers in general. Uh, and so they'll be, they be working with us uh, on covering, um, like creating stories around, well, the projects of the program, um, especially the projects that have been validated through peer reviewing. So all the winning projects that went through um, the, the application process, uh, we'll have every two weeks, we'll have uh, an article written by them about those projects and what's going on. Uh, and so there is, there will be a journalist, you know, um, you know, kind of, it's not really a journalist, it's more like someone who is working with us, you know, to write your stories also and to convey what's going on, uh, we'll be contacting you. Um, so it's going to be a much more agreeable experience than just being pressed, you know, you know, trying to hammer you, you know, with a story. Um, and uh, so good and Pixelis are here also to help us doing something a bit similar but on a different approach where why Mercury is is writing articles um it's it's not enough like and we we've been thinking about how we can use uh, social media such as facebook and instagram to share little stories about 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 the projects that are going on so like um how we can frame a project uh using like five slides within a story where each slide is about you know uh, the context, um, the the team, the 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 project, the 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 results they have, the needs also they have, and how they, how they can engage. You know, people looking at the at the at the story and how this story can be shared. Uh, so we are working right now on the on the framework that are going that is going to be super easy to uh, to work with, uh, and that you guys will be able to use too. So that if you want to create your own stories about what's going on in the community, you'll be able, you'll be able to to do that too. The idea is that we are able to um, not only, you know, talk about what's going on here, but we that we can engage more people in helping what you guys are doing and what what uh, this community is doing. Um, so this week, last Monday was uh, last Sunday actually was the deadline for the second round of uh, the drug or micro grant application process. So we're right now in the middle of the review process. In fact, if you haven't actually yet uh, done a review yourself, you're you know, welcome actually to uh, to do that. Um, I'm sure someone will put a link towards the the, the form to follow to uh, to be able to review. Uh, uh, projects. Uh, the deadline is on Sunday. We have, I believe, 12 or 13 projects uh, that applied uh, for the second round. So it's a constant number. Um, I think it's great. And the projects are really of high quality. Um, so we're looking forward also to see uh, more of the results at the end uh, and, uh, and see what kind of project we'll be able to, uh, to get the, the micro grants. Uh, so we'll, there will be more news on Monday for that. Um, and that pretty much is all in terms of uh, you know news from, from the program from my side. Um, now I'm going to um, give the mic to uh, Mark for the weekly updates on the community. Thank you. I'll be sharing my screen. Uh, there you go. You know, I wanted to try to do it with the background of. of uh... <laughs> of Zoom, but that's a bit complicated. Uh, <clears throat> very, very, very uh, quick update um, on the meta study. So some things at, as you're used to maybe have to show you a bit the state of the community, where people are coming from. So there's still a very large uh, uh, basis uh, from around the globe uh, that is uh, coming to check the program uh, with uh, a lot of, of, of people now also from France because of, of media exposure uh, locally, but very steady uh, number of visitors, like 500 people coming to visit uh, every day, 30 new people registering every day. So that's the rate of growth, it's pretty constant. Mm -hmm. 
Um, the, uh, in terms of how people got uh, to, to see the program, uh, I see something in the chat. Uh, okay, that's good. Um, so a lot of people come directly to the program page or to uh, project pages. Uh, there's also a lot of referral uh, that I will show you. Uh, we've been decreasing the bounce rate, which means the bounce rate is the rate at which people come to a page and then go back immediately somewhere else after visiting the page. And it's been decreasing uh, for the past two weeks, uh, which is good from like 90% to 70, 75%. So we have more retention of the people coming. Uh, in terms of how people got there, uh, you know, we, we're lucky to have, as, as, um, as Thomas was, was explaining, we've had some exposure and in particular with Mercury, uh, and he explained that we have now this partnership, uh, but also from uh, like funding agency like Nesta or AXA Research Fund, or like a news uh, article like in Uzbek Erika recently. Uh, so they really allow to, to, to bring uh, people to, uh, to the community. Uh, Slack activity were growing with more than, with almost 1200 people, more than 100 channels, uh, steady activity, very, very steady uh, over the, the past two weeks. Uh, and uh, in terms of skills, the new people that are attracting uh, to the community have a lot of skills related to software, uh, machine learning, data science, artificial intelligence. So we, we really have a, a uh, kind of a change of the face of it of the of the skill set of the community from very bio to something very software related but we still have biology uh, 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 biology cellular biology uh, appearing uh, in terms of the needs I was I was very happy to see that people are looking for a skill set related to peace so if any of you has uh, knows how to do peace there are some needs for peace uh, but also web development and, 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 and software. So that's very related to the community uh, arriving. Um, we now have, and that's the great work of, of Ratin in, 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 the, uh, in the team, uh, we, we, we have our own way to represent networks of interaction of the community uh, on the Slack. And in particular here, this is just a network of how people uh, react to each other messages. Uh, and we see the structure really of the here's a recent bio project uh, that are very active the coordination uh, and communication teams and the global announcement strategy that allows to capture uh, the people attention uh, active channels uh, from recently there's a big uh, uh, still nucleic acid amplification a lot of, of uh, activity going on syringe pump are are really like high energy activity on these channels uh there is uh we, we've been beginning to analyze a bit where new members uh, arrive uh, and that's something that Camille will talk a bit more about the onboarding strategy uh there is now a channel which is program questions support feedback uh where uh, 40 percent of the new members arrived and went so there's really that's a place where people go for actually asking where they could go afterwards and then they transit to other channels uh, around. Uh, so there's, uh, that's something Camille will talk about more. Uh, we also looked at the new channels on the Slack and well, obviously there's some, I would say, the new random is the Thomas Landrin memes, uh, but there's also program related channels and that's also related to the onboarding, uh, as well as a project that I believe will be talked about today, which is uh, related to school, and to education, uh, especially around, around viruses. Uh, and that's a, a channel that is also uh, uh, new and active. Uh, and, uh, sorry, I did, yes. And the final thing we're beginning to look as well is uh, the effects we're having by actually uh, giving micro grants. And, and, uh, 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 and, and so we just looked at the Slack activity on some of the projects uh, that were awarded the first round of micro grants uh, before and after. And so that you see that for some projects, it, it very much has a, a clear impact in terms of the activity. Uh, and so that's, uh, that's kind of also something we want to measure, which is the kind of uh, impact those kind of measures have on, on, on projects. Uh, 
So all these things are things we're discussing on, on our meetings that are not now uh, both on Mondays, so Recommoder System meeting and uh, Slack analysis meeting. Uh, and you're welcome to join, so don't hesitate to ping to have more information. Uh, and another thing I wanted to quickly say also is that um, uh, one other thing that I'm, 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 I'm working on is, is getting for the data challenge, getting data resources uh, as well as partnership. And uh, for that, we have a, an ongoing partnership with Open Humans Foundation for anything related to crowdsourcing data and meeting ethical standards in doing so. Uh, and we've updated the data challenge description to precise the steps for working with them for any crowdsourced data. Uh, so that's all for the weather forecast of today. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks, Mark. Um, now it's the time to hear more about uh, the recent advancements on the platform. And I think Leo has some good news to, to share. Yeah, I definitely have good news. And actually today I'm going to start something a little new that I, I like sort of started last week, which was that. Can you I speak a bit uh, uh, louder, Leo? Oh, yes, of course I can. Do that. Take my microphone very close. Yes. Um, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, so um, basically uh, uh, today I decided that I was going to continue on a little experiment I did last week where I posted a little tutorial on something and then you know people caught on and contacted me about it and so instead of this today I'm just going to do like a two minute little tutorial showing you like just a few features of Drogol that, that you might not be aware of uh, and so that'll it'll be easier for you to use uh, or, or, or a platform and right after this, uh, I'll share with you and I'll show you what uh, what is coming and uh, like uh, future things and uh, a little like exciting, uh, exciting news. So I'm just gonna share share one of my screen with you guys. Okay, cool. So the first thing I wanted to show you is that when you're on Drogo, you, you can actually uh, tag people. And I think a lot of people are, are familiar with the fact that you can tag with an at symbol. And you can then, you know, like type in the name of someone, uh, like like Thomas, and I'll find Thomas, right? Um, but what you might not be aware of is you can also tag projects like this. Uh, like you can basically do a hashtag, and if you do a hashtag, now um, I can then go and find the different projects. And I can tag those projects. And so the person in this project will receive a, a little notification knowing that, you know, someone is talking about their project and someone might want to help. So if you want to offer help to a pro project, this is a great way for you to, you know, contact people or a project and you can just publish it. And then, you know, it'll basically, you know, have this little tag where you can then navigate to the project directly. So that's, um, that's one little thing that I, that I wanted to share. Um, the the other thing I wanted to share with you is that uh, another way, uh, which is the reverse, which is if you have a project and you're looking for someone with a particular skill, um, and let's say you're looking for Mark, uh, which has a particular skill, which is kind of unique, which is the science of science skill, right? And so actually he has a little PhD student that's working with him that also has this skill, but let's, <laughs> you know, assume you were looking for Mark, uh, you can either click the contact button here directly, right? Or you can also find it on their homepage and you can click the contact button and you can write, uh, you can basically write a little message to them and it'll, they'll receive an email. And so uh, they will be able to know that yeah. you're trying to contact them, you know, and they'll be able to know that something is happening. And maybe you're looking for someone like a front end developer or a biologist or something. So you can always search by skill, find people and contact them on Drogo, right? And this is an important aspect of, of, of what we're trying to do here. And, and I know many of you are trying to make more connection between each other. And so I'm trying to show you two of the features that you can today use on Drogo to do that, right? Cool. Now, on to uh, news and announcement. So uh, this is just our beta server. So it's not yet on our main server and it's gonna come very much soon, very likely tonight. We just discovered new bugs while we were in beta. So we, we just pushed it by a few hours to have the time to correct this. But now when you will be going on social media and you wanna share your project and you just type in 
the URL, you're just going to share the URL of the project, right? Or using the share button will have the exact same effect, right? Um, and you just post it. Now you will have the project title and the little image and the link to the project that just, you know, basically will work flawlessly. And so this is a new thing, which is very important for many of you because social media, you know, is central to life today for good or bad debate, but it is at least central. And so being able to know share your project that way will allow all of you to have a much better impact, we hope. Um, yeah, so this will come very likely tonight, uh, maybe tomorrow if we still have some bugs and, uh, you know, there's like uh, a few kinks and things to iron out because we had a huge, uh, you know, refactorization of the front end. So yeah, that's basically uh, it for uh, platform update. I'm not going to boggle more of your time, uh, but yeah, I'll be back next week with a little tutorial again. If that is something you enjoyed, please let me know in the comments. Yep. Yeah, here's better. Yeah, thank you so much, Leo. This is really awesome. Um, the before we actually go uh, to hear more about uh, your updates, guys, um, I forgot to say that I, I actually have a very good news for for the for the winners of the of the of the macro grants, is that um, the the wire transfer is actually went through. So you'll be actually receiving uh, your <laughs> your funding uh, extremely soon, I believe. Um, it took us uh, some magics uh, to make it happen here because of the of the lockdown and the banks are working at 10% capacity and because uh, making uh, transfers outside Europe uh, is kind of not easy, but it's it's done. <laughs> um, so I, I hope we uh, we uh, you're going to be able to uh, to work better um, faster. Bef so. Um, now is actually the best time of this call is to, uh, to really hear about you guys. Um, and uh, the first person, first person to uh, that we're going to hear from is uh, John Urbanik. I'm going to um, to remind that uh, that we should try to keep this moment as short as possible, as um, we have more and more projects, and it becomes sometimes difficult to really actually get everyone uh to speak uh if if <coughs> i'm gonna keep for for this purpose i will keep a timer uh and i'll just beep uh whenever the timer you know is expired so that people know and, and they can you know it's just like conference style but like so that everybody else's time is respected that's basically the idea all right okay um john would you like to start great um so Two exciting things uh, from Epidemiomop at the modeling toolkit. Um, one being that, uh, so I'm actually looking at proposing a clinical trial based on some of the research we've done. Um, basically looking at uh, HLA typing as a potential stratification tool for uh, figuring out uh, likely uh, clinical outcomes um, for patients, uh, working with uh, some professors from UNC and Stanford on that. Um, additionally, I uh, have been working with a team called Corona Y, uh, working on building a uh, basically automated literature re review tool um, on papers from uh, the CORD19 uh, data set from Allen Institute. Um, so if you're a scientist and interested in potentially helping with some of that automated literature review machine learning, uh, please get in contact. Awesome, thanks. This is great news, congrats, John. Um, so the next person who, uh, maybe, maybe you know, while I'm, I'm talking about, um, I'm talking with the, the next person, maybe you can put some details about your project, like the, the Slack channel in the chat, so that people actually can refer to it uh, and, and, and join like, basically the discussion on your, on your, on your Slack. Um, the next person I'm going to call, uh, well, it's a group of people, um, Ellen, Chris, Sarah, Izzy, and Aubrey, uh, on the optimizing the NEB lamp test project. Who would like to speak for, for the project? Um, um, Chris, do you want to go ahead? Sorry. <laughs> I 
I think Chris, you were cold. Hello? Uh, Sarah, Izzy, um, Rachel, anyone? <laughs> Chris, Ellen, yeah, anyone. Hey, I'm sorry, I, I went to a different place. Can you all hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Um, <clears throat> Chris, are you taking over? Uh, yeah, unless you want to do it. <laughs> Um, okay, so things from our end have been moving along pretty well, I think. Um, and Sarah, Izzy, Ellen, if she's on, whoever wants to jump can jump in at any time. Um, so we are continuing to look at the uh, NEB color metric mix as a potential uh, lamp assay. Um, so we've done some preliminary testing and we have some results that we are uh, pretty happy with. Um, we're kind of moving the focus on one primer set now um, and looking to optimize within that primer set. So um, I know uh, our, our next steps are trying to look at temperature optimization of the assay, and then we'll move into messing with the primers and stuff, uh, primer concentrations, I'm sorry. Um, I mean, that's kind of that's kind of our where we're kind of at right now. So I think within the next week or so, we'll probably have a lot more to share because I think we'll have a lot more optimization under our belt. Um, we're also in constant communications with the other LAMP teams, because um, a lot of the preliminary work we're doing kind of cuts across all the different projects there. So um, again, Sarah or Izzy, if you want to jump in and add more, I think that's kind of a quick and dirty summary of where we are right now. Yeah, I guess the only thing I would add is um, it seems like we're kind of almost on par with Abbott testing and some of these other companies that they're kind of figuring out that they should have been looking at some things that we've been already thinking about. So it's kind of encouraging. Um, I guess that's all I'd like to add is it seems like we're on the right track. So it's that's nice. Sounds great. Um, so I think uh, Easy shared in the chat the link to the project. Uh, thank you for that. Uh, the next person and project we're going to hear about is the DIT Corona Detective. Uh, with Rachel. Hi everyone. So yeah, we're really excited about the project. Um, not only that we had a really nice call with some of the people from Cameroon recently who will also be joining in in later weeks as we choose the favorite sets of primers for the Corona Detective as we're calling it but also people just coming in from the project page. So I already put in something in the chat with a link to a sort of onboarding document that basically has a lot of technical details that we think people will find useful and hopefully know that we don't just want biologists, um, although you know any bio lab experience and, and equipment is very good, um, but uh, also, people um, even from my own Open Public Lab Aquarium have joined in and we, we've actually hacked a very ancient qPCR machine that is connected and it passed all of its diagnostic tests today. So right now we're just waiting to um, get our first orders of primers and enzymes and I've gotten email confirmations that they're en route, even the enzymes um, which uh, are really crucial for testing out the different sets of primers. And we're getting a lot of um, information together uh, and sharing it's the do it together method for us in this project nucleic acid amplification. So of course, um, Sarah and Chris and all those people who just talked are sort of the sister project to, to ours. And um, we look forward to, to getting more things to work. Um, and I guess um, just let us know if you have questions, come into the project and we'll hopefully be learning a lot more in the next week. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Sarah. Um, so I don't have any more uh, project on the list right now. Uh, so what I'm going to do is if um, 
there is a project that you would like to update us on, please, this is the time. Yeah. There's the uh, the new project. You just forgot about the, the list of the... There's yeah, yeah, I know, but I wanted to do it just right after, um, like if okay. there is an ongoing project that wanted to, uh, that we missed basically. Um, so if you have an existing project and want to make an update, that's now, you have five seconds to react. <laughs> Can I ask something? Hey, yes. I guess I'll turn on my video. So I was look, like, I feel like it would be nice if we could have somebody like a statistician or somebody who knows how to design experiments or something like that. I was looking through like people who know. So there's a lot of like data scientists, but I'm not sure, right? If they know more than it, like, it, there's a difference between that and if there is there, do, can you think of a way how to, if we want like specific skills, that are maybe more specific than these broad carrot categories, how we could go around like finding somebody like that hmm. is my question. I mean, like sadly, I'm, I'm gonna maybe answer this, but like sadly for now, the only thing we can provide is what people entered in their skills. Mm -hmm. So I think it's more of a general call for everybody that is on this call and that you know is on Drogo you know, maybe try to add more skills to your profile so that uh, they are searchable in a more fine-grained manner. I'll do and, that. Uh, I, I put a message. Uh, yeah, I saw. Ignacio knows people. <laughs> so okay. maybe you can see with him. Okay. I think there's uh, also... Yes, please. Um, hi, this is Alix here. There's also um, a few updates we'll be sharing from a program coordination level, but one of the things we're looking into is creating channels for people to share their needs. And so it would be like um, the channel title would be looking for a project or looking for a team or looking for resources or looking for expertise. And so that would be a space uh, where project teams could go and um, post announcements of the skills they're looking for. Cool. Um, sounds, if anybody has useful. feedback yeah. on that idea. Okay, lovely. <laughs> That's something that we'll be uh, rolling out in the next week. So if I could just maybe ask, and because everybody's on here too, we have a very specific ask <laughs> um, that I put in the, the notes, the agenda, but um, we're looking for someone that is CLIA, uh, has experience supervising in a CLIA approved lab. That is very specific. <laughs> Um, but if we need somebody to sign on as a lab director, and then if we just have this person, we can start doing patient testing in our lab. So I'll just throw that out. Can, can you describe this more like in, in a text that we can share? Sure. Yeah, thanks. That would, that would be fantastic. Um, the, um, I think Parsi, you wanted to talk about your project Hackit19. Yes. I put my uh, video on. Yes. Hello. My name hello. is Sophie. my name is Sophie. Uh, I live uh, by Paris, and uh, I can talk quickly about the project uh, Hackit19. Uh, I participated uh, to several hackathons. It's been uh, one month now. I met uh, with a team, a very international team with people from uh, Mexico, from uh, Canada, and from uh, Spain. And uh, we created a platform to push people to make a self-diagnosis. And the idea behind is to create uh, communities uh, between people uh, so that people could um, uh, be careful about themselves, but also about uh, the, the people of their communities. Um, we have several uh, levels in this platform. So first level is the self-diagnosis. Second level is to give people ideas on um, uh, the um, crowdiness of the shops and pharmacies uh, and uh, try to make a mix between the information given by the self-diagnosis and uh, the crowdiness of the shop. So people would be able to take decisions and choose to go or not to a shop and if they go to a shop uh, where uh, it seems to have it seems to be uh, it seems that we have people uh, um, declaring symptoms of uh, coronavirus they would know that they would have to be more careful 
uh, when they move in a public space. So um, we participated, the team participated to three hackathons and we won the last hackathons, which was with a, a group called uh, Data Natives and it was a hackathon in Greece. So now we are working to, um, to translate all our websites in Greek and uh, we have to deliver something uh, very quickly uh, to the Greek uh, uh, authorities because uh, there were people from um, Greek, uh, Greek, Greek uh, uh, ministries uh, who attended the, the hackathon and uh, who selected uh, the, the winner. Wow. So this is an, an update. Uh, I'm not completely uh, online on the Joggle tools. So I have to go back to uh, the Joggle website to put everything uh, clear. Uh, and I just joined the, the Slack today. Perfect, well, you're welcome. Thank you so much, Parsi. Uh, we're looking forward to hear more from you. Um, the next project uh, we're going to hear from, it's a, it's, a, it's a new project. It's called the Hunter Futo uh, Project Basic Respirator. Who would like to speak for this project? Hi, I'm Hunter. Can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Um, so I have a project called the Basic Respirator. It's a disposable N95 respirator. Um, this is a, this is an example of it. There are a lot of 3D printed respirators out there, and they've uh, they've served a need quickly um, because you can print them quickly and easily. This one is designed to be flexible. So one of the issues with 3D printed respirators is that they're um, they don't fit the face well. So I made a version out of Tyvek um, that is flexible and conforms to the face. It has a 3D printed filter enclosure. I'll just show this one. Um, so you twist it and it, uh, you can um, insert, the, uh, insert the filter. Um, it comes flat shipped. So it comes as a kit. There's double-sided adhesive and you fold it into place. I have another version that um, doesn't have a 3D printed filter that uses uh, layers of polypropylene that is attached to Tyvek. Um, the idea is that the entire respirator would be thrown away after use. Um, currently seeking clinical approval, and I have an email into the FDA as well. So I'm trying to get FDA approval, which is ambitious, um, but it's worth a shot. So that's it. Thank you, Hunter. Um, this is definitely something that could be of interest to APHP. Uh, so we have a special pipeline with them. APHP is uh, the Paris Hospitals Association. Um, and so we do, uh, we do testing of masks and, uh, and other kind of medical devices. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely some, um, I'd like to do a lot of testing, especially fit testing. I'm going to do my own fit testing this week, but testing it on other faces would be, uh, would okay. be really helpful. Um, thank you so much, Hunter. Um, the next project we want to hear about is called uh, Free Webinars uh, by Eugenia, Luba, and Lewi Bo. Um, so hi. My name is Ophelia and I am presenting a new project that aims to provide free webinars for schools uh, a bit all over the world. Um, it all started with, uh, and that's why like uh, it's, a, it's a joint project between me and uh, and Lewibo actually means Lectures Without Borders and it's an association that um, Yuba is the president of. Um, she, so they, they had contacted me because I'm a virologist to give a webinar on, uh, on viruses to one school, because apparently there were like a lot of students that were interested in knowing a bit more about viruses. Not, um, I mean, the question of course started with coronavirus, but it went like, okay, we really don't know what a virus is, so it's good to make it broader. And uh, so I started designing this webinar for this school and I started thinking because this question came from like two or three different schools who are not organizing a proper platform uh, to offer these webinars uh, for free and to, every school that can uh, maybe be interested in it. Um, I mean, me, I, I myself can give webinars in three languages, but we have several other scientists that are already in the database of Lectures Without Borders um, that would also mm -hmm. help us. So we know that we can reach a lot of schools in a lot of countries. So I really think it would be um, a really nice project to bring, especially since now we have all students are um, basically locked down at, at home and have to do uh, all the classes uh, through internet. Um, for them it will not be that hard and it will be, the idea is to make it 
not compulsory for the student, but uh, optional, so that the, the students that are interested have access to it. Um, but yeah, we're already starting to create the big database and well, the database is there for the schools, but um, but for the webinars, for the needs of the schools. So that's basically it. That's what we want to do. Uh, Luba, do you want to say anything else? Well, now only that we already have a lot of schools from Nepal, India, Latvia, Romania, Russia, Belarus who are really waiting for webinars in any languages. So if you have even even 15 minutes would do actually, you know. So if you have if you have some energy to share, know that everyone is overloaded, but it's, you're very welcome. Yeah, we share the link. That's that's great. Uh, thank you, guys. I, I, it makes me think of uh, a similar project in Africa uh that has been submitted i think this week uh and that are looking for ways to uh to, to teach children also at a distance uh you should definitely connect with them yes thanks um well uh i think that it as oh um so not, not the next part is going to be about the important requests on needs from the community uh, but as I'm reading, uh, I think Sarah, you uh, you actually talked about that already, I believe. Um, and then, so the next uh, request is going to be from Epidemonyming Toolkit. Uh, so maybe you can speak about that need. Um, maybe I think that's that's John, right? Yeah. Uh, so again. Uh, major need would be uh, kind of supporting this other project that I'm working with, uh, Corona Y. Um, so uh, if you are a scientist who would benefit from uh, any sort of uh, improvements to your literature review process, um, and you might have some ability to either give feedback about what types of information you would want to have automatically extracted, or potentially uh, actually give annotations on some papers on uh, you know, the CORD-19 data set, uh, that would be super useful. Okay, awesome. Um, so I think we're, we're, we're done, except if uh, in the next five seconds, we have someone saying, hey, I want to share something. I think we're good. <laughs> uh, so the next part is going to be about the war groups. Uh, so I'm going to call first Kami, who is going to talk more about what been, has been going on in the governance working group. Uh, hi everyone, can you hear me well? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Cool. Um, so very happy to be uh, here again this week. Um, so many people have been um, working especially on onboarding because it was like a tremendous uh, bottleneck, not a bottleneck, but a good opportunity to take for uh, everybody to navigate this uh, initiative better and to uh, put their skills at good use. Uh, I'm just going to share my screen quickly um, because I have one or two slides. Um, so how do I do that? There are too many things here. Okay, so big updates. Uh, oh, it's loading. Okay. Um, so big updates this week. I'm just going to be very short. There are four uh, new channels that I really encourage you to join in, especially the first one. So we have set a billboard, which is where you're going to find every essential document um, to navigate um, this initiative. Um, if anybody is interested in working on the onboarding, uh, you can join us uh, on program and onboarding. We still have some stuff to do. I'm just going to develop on the onboarding afterwards. And uh, another channel has been created, which is called Program Capacity Building. Uh, it's led by Victoria and Adam. Uh, they're working as well in collaboration with the, the student engagement channel and this new project on webinars. Uh, the main goal is to develop capacities um, of the members of this community. Um, so that first, uh, the first thing they are going to do is to uh, launch a webinar series. So if you have any idea of webinars, if you have any need, uh, or if you'd like to be someone presenting uh, at a webinar, uh, reach out to them. Also, uh, they are also going to work on how to support this community with a, 
uh, project management tools. So we're going to come back to you next week about that with a work, more work done. Um, lastly, uh, but Alex is going to develop that. This is the suggestion box channel. If you have any suggestion, you can uh, you can reach out to Alex or uh, go to that channel. I just want to let you know that like Michelle, David, Alex, Catherine, and I and many others have uh, put a lot of work into uh, facilitating the onboarding and the navigation in this initiative. Um, so in the billboard uh, channel, you'll find an onboarding flow. You can have a glimpse, like a look at it here. It's basically if you're new or if you have an idea, a project, a skill, skills and time or resources, these are the step-by-step -step to follow. So it's just in order to make your way much easier. We also developed an FAQ and a master file where you find all the projects, all the Slack channels, and all the useful links um, in one click. So yeah, the main goal is just to make your life easier. And if you have any question, you can go to the program question support feedback channel. Sorry. <coughs> um, we'll be answering all of your questions and feeding the FAQ with it. Um, mm -hmm. So where you, oops, where to find us is, okay. So if you'd like to be part of the governance team or more um, involved in the global coordination, please reach out to me. We have two weekly meetings on Monday and Thursday. And also, uh, this is kind of new and we're trying to figure out our ways with it. Uh, but if you if you like part of a project or a working group or a challenge and you want to share your good practices uh, or to share your pain points and just like interact with a, a lot of other people you don't really usually talk to, you can come to the ambassador meeting. It's every Monday at 4 p.m. UTC. Um, and I think Alex, they want to maybe uh, um, say a word. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Yeah, and if you have any question, you can just reach out to me. <laughs> Thank you, Camille. Um, yes, so two quick uh, notes from me. So um, first, a update. Um, so I spoke to, I recognize a few names on this call. So last week I spoke to over 20 different project leads and um, different project representatives. So uh, I had some great conversations and I was conducting these interviews and these kind of open-ended surveys to learn more about how the community functions and how we on the coordination team can better serve the project teams that are creating these amazing and important solutions. Um, so I'm not going to be sharing on this call uh, a detailed uh, report on those surveys. I am going to be um, just uh, letting you know of a, a few heads ups. Um, so one is the suggestions box channel. Um, I highly recommend that you join that channel if you have any suggestions on um, anything that the coordination team could be doing better to support uh, you uh, project teams. Um, second thing is um, another heads up in terms of uh, how we'll be putting in place a few new tools for projects to better find um, new team members, expertise, resources, things like that. So one of them is the uh, new looking for channels that I mentioned, um, as well as um, uh, a new processes and flows within the Slack community. Um, and that feeds into the billboard channel. So um, as Camille mentioned, that will be a channel where you'll be able to find uh, reference documents and what I like to call single source of truth. Um, so in a community like Open COVID-19, there can be a lot of information, a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that are um, being updated continuously, and it's easy to feel lost. And that was a, a recurring feedback from the conversations I had last week. So I invite you to join the Billboard channel. It's where you will find the truth on everything that you're wondering about. Um, that's it for me. I wanted to keep it short, um, and I'll likely share uh, more data and uh, feedback from this survey that I conducted. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex uh, and Camille, for all this great work with uh, with the governance team. Um, 
I think we are going to go uh, directly to the communication uh, work group with Hans, who wants to share some updates. Uh, Hans? Hi, everyone. This is Hans from the communications team with a, a quick update. What's important to share is basically what I've said last week already. Uh, we have social media pages for Open COVID-19 on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. So if you have accounts with any of these or all of these, then please, please follow us because uh, if we get more followers, then we'll have a better reach. Uh, next to that, we, if you see any of our posts, please engage with them. So give them a like or share them or comment on them. Because once again, that will make sure those posts get to more people. Uh, and that will be useful to all of us, especially because you can now make posts for our social media. So if you want anything to be posted uh, on our pages, you can first write a draft, which will go into our Google Drive. I'll send the link now but all the links are also in the agenda under communications if you want to find our social media page and, and the drive. So once you've created a draft of a post you would like us to post on our pages, we, you need to put it in our posting schedule, which is a different document, same drive. We will review it and, and then post it for you. So if you need to recruit more people, if you want to share a, a story of your project or a, a profile of somebody who did amazing work, then please write it up, put it in that drive, and we'll make sure to, um, to post it for you. That's it for me. Thank you very much for listening. Thanks so much, Hans, uh, and the whole communication team. Um, the next work group we want to hear more about is a student engagement work group with uh, Boyin Chan and Michelle Hao, uh, who would like to speak for this work group. Hello. So we will also keep our updates short and sweet. First of all, thank you for keeping the student engagement channel really active in the first couple of weeks. So I guess we have one important update and one ask. Our update is, as you can see, we have a, um, sorry, I don't know which way I need to walk. This is the best announcement ever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a student meet meetup tomorrow. It is a little late, but we figured out students and we would know tend to stay up late. So it's at 4 p.m. Eastern uh, and it is at 10 p.m. Paris time. So this is just going to be a casual hangout to say hi, ask any questions you have about student engagement or connect with people or projects or just to hang out and just you know take a break and connect with people since we're all stuck at home right now um another thing is to keep share so two other things is to also i'll just stand out of the way so you can see the um see the poster so two things please keep sharing on um, the program the student engagement program to anyone you know we have pinned a post with social media links to share it would be great to connect with any educators another huge thing please 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 fill out our mentoring survey because we are really looking for interested mentors we have already connected to two organizations that would be willing to take look for mentors for students and engage in a mentoring program so the sooner we can have that information and people who are interested the better um please contact me or michelle if you would like to connect further or if you have any questions and again um i will now go under to show student meetup <laughs> <laughs> meet um tomorrow at 10 p.m paris time 4 p.m eastern standard time thank you so much Thank you, Pauline uh, and, and Michelle. Uh, this is great. Um, so I think, um, so we have a, a, a last work group to hear from, which is uh, the project review group. Uh, it's a group uh, um, of people interested in uh, um, making the review, the application process uh, better. Uh, we started, you know, uh, with really like an alpha version of it, like very simple. Uh, but there are many ways we can improve this as it's really, uh, it's really a core aspect of this program and of Drogo. So if you're interested in working with us on this and provide feedbacks and help us build you know, a better application and review process you know, that involve uh, the whole community, 
you're welcome to, to join the, the, the program project review channel. I'm going to put the link right now um, here in the chat. Um, that's about it for the work group. Uh, so before, before actually we, uh, we close this call, uh, um, you know, what if like, you guys want to share anything? Like yeah, it's, if, if you want to, to share, um, you know, like impression, uh, you know, like an important news or, you know, like a surprise, that would be the moment uh, to do it uh, before we do the group picture. Um, so we'll be waiting for that. Do you want to share anything, you guys? I just, I'm wondering, I don't think you mentioned we need reviewers, right? By today. Yes, thank you, Sarah. So um, we're still in the process of doing reviews. Uh, and so we need actually still more reviewers to do um, the reviewing work. Uh, it's very simple. Um, there is a link that you can follow. Uh, it's in the announcement channel, but I don't have the link here. Maybe uh, someone can find the link and post it in the, in the, in the chat, but uh, anyone can participate in the review process. This is very important. Uh, we try to gather as much review as possible uh, to be as, as, uh, you know, as inclusive as possible also. Uh, the reviews are also uh, transparent. Uh, they're anonymous though. And at the end, we compute a score based on all your reviews to, to, uh, to, uh, to see which, what are the projects that went through uh, like above and or under the cutoff uh, that we decide. And then the, the project that went through uh, like above the cutoff are funded basically. Um, so yeah, um, good reminder, Sarah. What about, what about but news? Thomas, Thomas yeah? when is the deadline? The deadline is on Sunday. Oh, okay, for the second round reviews, deadline That's Sunday. right. Okay. Well, I think um, uh, we have, you know, uh, it's one of the shortest uh, community call we have made since a long time. And I think it's good that we actually keep time like this. Um, so before before we uh, we say <laughs> goodbye to everyone, uh, we have this little tradition now, and I'm going to ask everyone to active activate their um, video stream uh, so that we can take a group picture um, of uh, everyone in this call. Um, and I'm going to take a, a screen capture. I'm going to wait that everyone activates uh, their video stream. Um, Leo, Sarah, um, Pauline, Sophie. I don't have a webcam, Thomas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sarah, oh yeah, oh, um, okay, let's do it. All right, and you can say hi. <laughs> awesome. Hello. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, this was the eighth uh, global committee call of the Open COVID-19 Initiative. Thank you again very much for all your work, all your contributions. Uh, and I'm looking forward to see you on Slack, on Drogo, and at the next global committee call on Wednesday. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.